Hey guys, Sean here. So we are now live and we are using the Panasonic GH5 today, which is going to be quite interesting because I haven't tried using my GH5 uh, for live streaming. So I finally have figured out using the 1080p with the 24 uh, P setting so you need to change to cinema setting to do this so in this video or in this live stream I want to talk about uh, yeah what's happening at CAS so also trying out and see how the live stream goes and hi I Ian from uh, Milan so next week is gonna be CES 2019 at uh, in America however I won't be attending it but there is quite a lot of news happening uh, over there so hi from Vietnam <laughs> I don't know how to speak your name so uh, so main thing is uh, quite a lot of things are going to happen at CES so uh, I'll talk about uh, some new cameras. However, I don't think at CS a lot of really new things are going to be uh, shown. So pretty much the the uh, DJI Pocket will be there with a lot of more accessories that will be more available right now. And also rumors website, I don't really see that much happening then uh, that the Panasonic S1 and S1R will be uh, available there to test so probably will be more a final version that is actually works uh, however I will be at CP plus Japan and get my hands on on that camera there uh, from Sony sides um, there are a little bit of talks maybe like uh, that we will see like more an entry level uh, mirrorless camera because the A5100 haven't has not been replaced yet for a long while. So, yeah, any other people here? Any questions along the way? What else kind of rumors? Because the A7S3, I don't think we will see it that soon. Um, CS CS isn't I don't think it's the place where they would launch it so CS is more for like the consumer grade stuff but um, there is like a 8k presentation going on with Sony at CS so that was mainly about the 2020 Olympics so that is mostly about more like the high-end stuff uh, for broadcasting so mainly like HK TV, HK uh, camcorders and I don't think there would be like A7S 3 with HK video that would be over absurd um, the other things we'll probably see let's see show up the rumor website here let's get to picture in picture so Let's see what else. So rumor 51.0 FE lens. And so Olympus is actually weird things going on. I don't think they're releasing any new cameras. Um, also the company is in like a huge trouble right now. So Panasonic hints for both cheaper entry level and more video orientated. So hopefully there is like a more affordable full frame coming, but uh, also there should be a like G90 coming because um, I have the, or like the uh, kind like the G7 level. So the, the the numbers are now really weird so because like they before have like the uh, G6, G7 and then a later became G85 instead of the G8s and um, like G7 
G9T because the G9 is already a camera. Uh, so there should be like a more entry level GH5 version at Panasonic, which um, I think is around this time of year. It should be, they should make one of those because GH5 is lost, uh, is already out for a while. So this should be like an entry level version of the GH5. Um, of course, not really having all the features, but being more affordable, smaller and lightweight. That'd be an interesting camera to actually see. Uh, one thing also I really am interested about is um, there's a monitor company called Port Keys and actually on Facebook they have port keys so port keys has actually made a quite interesting monitor but I think um, what's the special about it it has touch screen capabilities so I think this is going to start happening with more monitors and maybe Atomos should also look into something like this because that would be very interesting if we have like an Atomos uh, Yeah, basically an Atomos uh, Recorder with also Like a touchscreen for actually controlling the camera So it's not touchscreen just like normally changing settings, but touchscreen with camera control so you can change like aperture uh, ISO and all those things, but also um, enable you to like control some of the lens functions on some of the cameras. I am using autofocus right now on my GH5, so it should be if I do this, it should focus on my hand, and then it should it's not really that quick. It sees my face, but it's not really that quick from changing that focus. So, thank you, Keith Jackson. Uh, Happy New Year to you guys too. So, A7S three. I think maybe uh, they would do it at CP plus uh, CS. I don't think so. Uh, right now there isn't like a um, like I've seen like people publishing things but uh, I don't think a7s3 is going to be this quick also it's more like a video orientated uh, product than um, what CS is about so I think either uh, CP plus where they have like a uh, it's also mainly because it's in Japan or they have like something more like in uh, London or it's yes, like a BVE show in London or mostly like broadcast related uh, shows because uh, last year at Photo Fair here in Hong Kong they were really pushing video with the A7S so um, they had like major uh, setups for video filming they had like uh, wire uh, like people hanging off wires with like uh, pulling the a7s to film with and also rigging the a7s so this month I think mostly I think more the consumer end uh, like the lower end because the Sony wise they haven't replaced the a5100 yet and that one is still like quite a nice camera the only downside is the overheating because the camera is actually pretty nice for vlogging because it has that tilt up screen so i think i hope they actually will make one and that basically becomes a 4k that has no overheating issue but still has that tilt up screen uh, it might be not as small but like that tilt up screen is just makes a lot of difference so what I think about the G80 the G80 is actually pretty cool or G, like some country is G80 and some countries G85 
Um, I have the G7 and I really like the camera. I actually use the G7 quite a lot still for vlogging. And um, if I would actually choose between the two, the G80 with the IBIS, it makes life easier, especially handheld uh, filming certain things. And especially it, most of the wide angle lenses and all of the prime lenses don't have uh, um, like iOS. Especially if you want to like use the Olympus lenses, most of them don't even have iOS in them. A mobile director EU, do you know what's happening with the rebuild now? Why they stop production? So um, it's not stopping the production. So what is what I've heard on some of the groups is that they are uh, getting some uh, things fixed. So the so in a few weeks they will restart selling a fixed version, and people having issues with the previous versions uh, can actually uh, use their guarantee to replace it. So I'm not quite sure. I don't. Uh, I haven't heard from CN themselves like what they were planning to do with that. So I'm not quite sure. Um, is what kind of issue it was having? Because personally, when I'm using my rebuild, I haven't haven't had any uh, like major issues, other than that I'm using like a Android phone and certain functions aren't there yet. But mostly like the rebuild is, I think it's still going quite well and quite is. Also, I filmed a wedding uh, with the rebuild and uh, we'll do a video soon about uh, that. So, so Dream Maker, I've got the deck link regain and famous Sigma 8. Do you think the MFT mount will fall? And everybody switch to full frame. So personally, I feel like the MFT mount has its purpose, uh, especially right now um, filming anamorphic. I feel like the MFT mount right now is like perfect for that because uh, it it's with a lot of the anamorphic lenses it actually falls quite well, nice into the size of the lenses, and with full frame lenses I still have like quite issues like finding a lens that isn't overly big of gloss um, in the front to actually uh, not get like weird vignetting with uh, a anamorphic lens in front but I feel like um, Panasonic will just still make micro thirds just on the side will have like the full frame because it's still it, it's the full frame can't really compete of course with the MFT yet because like the their uh, full frame or actually most of the full frame cameras are still like new you don't have that much lenses to use on them yet and you don't really uh, and also the prices isn't that cheap so they are talking about making uh, a more affordable camera but it still needs to wait for them to uh, make affordable lenses for them too. So other things, uh, yeah, about port keys. So let's go back to picture in picture. So port keys here. Actually, let's use that music. So here you can see them using touch control to change this zoom in and out lens. This is the uh, Zcam E2. Actually, that's the, that's also something interesting. Zcam E2 is coming out with two new cameras. So one is the E2G, which is a global shutter camera. So it's a pretty nice, small, compact uh, camera, but the global shutter won't have like the like the same abilities of the E2, but uh, the price still is going to be interesting. And they will have a affordable entry level camera uh, for around six or no, around 700, 800 US dollars because their current E2 is like 2000 is 
quite a hefty price for a lot of people. But the E2, uh, like the more affordable one, is going to be quite interesting for uh, like uh, eight, seven to eight hundred US dollars because it's also like a nice package. Uh, and seeing them also like developing their camera right now more and more is actually quite interesting. So the port keys here we can see it connected with the Sony camera and controlling the power zoom and also probably could change like ISO and everything else. So I feel like this is going to be an quite interesting product because like uh, I feel like right now with what we will has like using your phone to control it. Um, I feel like the time you need to s link with your phone and uh, get it set up it takes too long if it's a monitor probably would like uh, you don't have to connect or like wireless connect it and it'd be just directly plugged in and turn everything on that would be much quicker because i felt like when i was using the we um that i would not really use my phone with the phone app that much because it just takes too much time to actually set it up unless it's like a um, more of a scripted scene that I would literally would set it up more uh, because I would have more time to prepare or set it, my things up. But if you are really doing events or wedding, you don't have these the, the couple of minutes for that. So you want to be much quicker. I feel like I do need to have like an extra screen or I need to use my phone for viewing like what the comments are let's just see if i can use my phone to see the comments um, let's go to my channel so are there any other questions so do you use only laptop now and HDMI to USB capture nice performance good inside. So what is what I'm using is um, the Black Magic Mini recorder, which is like a small box, which uh, is connected to the Thunderbolt of my uh, MacBook Pro. So uh, I probably need to have like an additional monitor to actually get more things that I can view. Because right now I can't really feel like what the comments are uh, unless I use my phone of course and also like there is a slight delay compared to uh, what is happening so it's not like a real live thing happening um, you guys can see the delay here I started working with the viewing software to begin with on my Dell XP. So Resolve is a nice software. Uh, I'm actually going to release like the seamless transition for it soon, but um, still, uh, it's not that easy to make it work properly. So I am still trying to make the installs uh, for it because otherwise you guys need to uh, really manually install it which isn't that nice to do so black uh, DaVinci Resolve is nice it has still some things it can improve on especially in, at the normal editing side because I feel like the quick buttons aren't all that and I don't think Blackmagic would have anything special coming up at CES uh, because the pocket is pretty much their thing unless we will see like a replace or like a new micro that is 4k um, what I do feel like we would see more at uh, C maybe not at CES yet but I think like more and more companies would come out with like similar to the DJI pockets but better because I feel like DJI Pocket really have 
made it uh, like they kind of missed the line of making it more like the really all in one camera. So they pretty much what I see like with all the accessories, they want to make you buy all the accessories. So it's more becomes a complete camera, but because it's missing all these features uh, on purpose so they could make the camera cheaper. But uh, I don't think like adding a headphone jack is going to make that more expensive. But I can hear my laptop really going crazy now. Close down Photoshop. So yeah, pretty much with the DJI Pocket, I feel like a lot of people can, a lot, actually a lot of the drone companies could make that same kind of camera. Because pretty much it's like a uh, Mavic Air with the wings plug, uh, like removed. And pretty much uh, I feel like if they actually used the like maybe the spark batteries or like the uh, Mavic batteries, it actually even be like just the body size of the Mavic. It would be a better camera and also would have way, way better battery life and also enable you to replace the batteries. But uh, like, even though a lot of people are like saying like, it's a really cool camera. I, for me still feel like uh, it could have been a better camera instead of what is now. So I feel like uh, in the upcoming months, uh, a lot of the Chinese companies are going to make something similar, but better because honestly, like uh, people say, oh, the, it would be just a rip off, but right now there are a lot of companies right now in China that aren't really making crappy uh, knockoffs anymore. They actually try to make something even better. So even like the, the set cam and also the Kinefinity. So you are starting to see more Chinese companies making like more high end, much better cameras and trying to like really, really compete with each other. And also DJI themselves is a Chinese company. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what is going to happen. So it ex it's 4K monitor when you can split the screen into several rooms or yeah. Yeah, right now I have like pretty much just one laptop. I was thinking it could uh, use the funnel port to connect with my uh, iMac 5K, but too bad they actually uh, removed this feature on like the 2015 model. So it's kind of sad that they did that uh, because it would be really nice if I was able to connect my MacBook with my uh, iMac and use my iMac as an external monitor. Now I need to, I could, basically connect it with like one of my smaller monitors to use that uh, because I have like a lot of the video monitors I would use on my shoulder rigs. Um, but or buy a big TV and have like a lot of like small screen split up. let's talk more about what would see so um also another thing is like the xeon crane 3 is actually for sale right now so people can actually already buy it and uh but it's just a limited sale um i'm not quite sure what the big boss idea was about it but uh, there is like people can already buy the crane free right now on like certain uh, websites. So the crane free is going to be quite interesting. Uh, but I, for me, it was actually still, it feels like it's still like a little bit to push too early. Um, just wish they would have listened a little bit longer about what might needed to change yet. But I will do a video later about the crane free. 
So what we'll see, uh, basically CS or like more upcoming, I think CS might actually see like more pocket, uh, like the DJI pocket cameras maybe as like a drawing or 3D render uh, or like maybe a mock-up that doesn't really work. But um, I think at, I don't think CP plus CP plus there isn't that many Chinese companies. So it should be like one of the later shows uh, mid this year that we'll see like more companies be making a concept or like have more finalized concept of like a DJI pocket like camera. So I feel like those would be like the much better camera. So they would have probably listened to like all the negativity about the DJI Pocket and then like improved upon it because right now all people have done reviews and all of the information is out there what's wrong with the camera and instead of making the same mistakes they could easily improve upon it and I feel like yeah the port keys monitor is going to be quite an interesting uh, development with like a lot of the filmmakers uh, especially if Atomos also enables uh, controlling your camera with the Atomos uh, recorders that's going to be quite interesting for a lot of the gimbal users because instead of um, yeah touching the monitor or actually uh, using a phone app feel like if you have like external monitor with like control over the camera it's also quite an interesting thing but I don't think it needs to be wireless just be wired is okay um, let's see a little bit uh, have a little bit of cold right now so so I am actually going to do also more black magic tutorials. So if you guys um, have any suggestions, uh, yeah, drop me an email or uh, PM me because uh, yeah, probably start doing more and more black magic tutorials because there is of course more and more people suggesting uh, to go for the uh, DaVinci Resolve because um, it's for free for in the first place and I feel like if they uh, push and push it more further uh, it's gonna be the software to use basically uh, right now the FX is still a little bit limited for what I can see but I can still build certain effects that I want um, making them into a preset also has like some limitations because I can't make the presets to um, adjust to the frame so it can't be easily set slower or faster so uh, to make it slower or faster people would need to know how to animate and also change a lot of keyframes and that's kind of an issue so the I will be uh, yeah actually revealing the effect or the preset for the seamless transition in resolve soon but the only that uh, the only issue is that they are set to 10 frames so you can't really change them to um, fast or slower that's the only issue with the yeah current DaVinci resolve and actually let's look at some of the cameras in 2019 um, which I feel like uh, or which you guys feel like that would be still interesting to look for second hand so current bit rate is 300 or uh, 3000 bit bytes so it's 3 MB I think so it's not like really high bit rate or actually 3000 KB so it should be like 3 megabytes 
So what I'm also uh, I think the the OBS is actually changing it to 720p because I can't change like if I do picture in picture, I can show you. So picture in picture, so video capture. If I show you properties, I can't change it to higher. So it's 720p right now. Um, so here. But if I look at black magic here, it does say 1080-24. So the OBS is actually changing it to 720p for some reason. I can't really get a 1080p out of it. But I'm like, it's downscaling to uh, 720p and upscaling it to 1080p again. It's kind of silly what's going on. And so that. So what you see is 1080 because it's uh, the OBS is upscaling the signal back to 1080, which I think might still look okay. Let's see, is, are there any other questions or actually any other rumor mills you guys have seen like um, what might come out so uh, Nikon might come out with something like a crazy lens the yeah so it's like the 58 or the the yeah 58 millimeter 0 0.95 lens Um, personally, the Nikon, um, I've used it and held it, uh, I was able to try it out when, uh, Dan Chang uh, gave it to me at IBS, uh, uh, IBC to test out with the Webel for a bit and I really don't like the Nikon menu. It's really, really annoying. Okay, so 8K. So this might be the 8K camera they're gonna show. So it, at uh, CS there should be more 8K or a lot of 8K talk for 2020 for the Japanese Olympics because they're going to try and like do like 8K K broadcasting there. So, mirrors, rumors. So it's just two days from now. So it's pretty much, uh, yeah, only Panasonic and. Sony have like a scheduled event at CES while other brands doesn't because I don't think Canon would release much uh, Olympus yeah Pentax isn't doing anything radical Photokina is cancelled um, yeah actually missed the last one I was, wa I was thinking about going to it but I don't want to travel so much. So, hi Ali. Let's see. So what do you guys think of actually the new Panasonic? Because personally I feel like I just don't like that it doesn't have that normal flip out screen like the GH5. That's the only big issue I have with that new camera. The rest I'm okay with uh, all of the features that they can do. And it's interesting to see uh, if Panasonic's gonna be able to make it affordable because right now the prices are still quite high. Uh, so the rumors are about 30, 400 which is 
quite on the high side if you compare it to like the a7 III. Um, so it's quite a uh, not really affordable camera, but the size wise is going to be still similar to the J5, so it's not that much bigger. Like to see the new Panasonic lens, the 10. Yeah, the 10 to 25 is uh, it, it's it was announced last year, but it was not like ready yet. So that is also going to be quite an interesting lens because, especially if you are into vlogging, uh, because it's basically a 20 millimeter to 50 millimeter, and if you really do vlogging a lot. Um, 20 millimeter is or like 20 millimeter equivalent of like full frame it's quite enough because uh, on my a7r2 I use like a 21 millimeter when I vlog and that I feel like it's wide enough uh, for like vlogging so it being like a 20 millimeter equivalent it's wide enough for vlogging and when you uh, zoom into 25 it's equivalent to a 50 millimeter so you can get like good, like a good coverage basically. So you can get like a wide shot of yourself. And if you want to capture something more close up, you can go to the 25 millimeter. So definitely the 10 to 25 from Panasonic is going to be interesting. Let's see what else going on here. So here we have like Sony mount versus the other mount. So Sony mount, the E mount is a pretty small mount comparing to what's coming out with uh, the Canon and the Nikon Z mount. And personally, if it's really gonna be that much of an issue because currently I don't feel like going like those crazy numbers because like even if they make an f1 uh, lens 1.2 lens it's going to be really ridiculously expensive so unless it's they make it cheap but i doubt they will do that hi exclusive travel reviews so I also doubt that Sony would replace their mount anytime soon. So yeah, with the Canon EOS R, um, personally, it's an interesting camera, but it's still misses a lot of things but for photography probably be nice um, right now actually I'm using a pro photo lighting to light myself and kind of annoyingly pro photo doesn't really support Sony really yet because like there isn't a pro photo a1 um, for Sony and I can buy like the air remote but with if I would buy a Canon um, or if I need to buy a camera for photography probably like would buy a Canon for now um, currently like a lot of the professional lighting like really high-end professional lighting don't really support a lot of brands yet they support like mainly the high-end ones So, okay, so was this just announced? So yeah, at CS and also Olympus launches the EM1X. Actually look at this promo without audio. So, this is the new 
Olympus camera on 24th so it's at the end of the month so personally um, if I need to talk about Olympus I don't really like Olympus because their menu system is kind of odd so I've even though I've worked at a shop before and actually like uh, sold Olympus but if I have got need to go through the menu uh, it's such annoyance to actually uh, change settings like out of all the camera brands I feel like Nikon and Olympus uh, has like the worst of the worst uh, menu um, actually like Leica is probably like the third even though Leica has some stuff that is similar to um, Panasonic but some of the stuff is also kind of odd so if you choose only one camera between GH5 and the a7 III which would it be and why so if I would need to choose is dependable if it's for filmmaking or for photography so if it's really for but actually I would still feel like the a7 III because I you I am using my a7 R2 much more the a7 or the GH5 I now use this I do use it is as a uh, live camera and mostly for my YouTube but I do feel like the look is just so different um, I love the look of using a 100 millimeter f2 lens on a full frame and I can't get that similar look if I'm using my GH5 even using the same lens or with a speed booster even attached to it I just can't get that same amount of depth of field with it so I do feel like a full frame uh, still looks nicer but that is of course so a market with uh, if you don't really purposely need to shoot that way because uh, it's just a certain look that I prefer but if you shoot like product shots uh, mainly like the smaller sensor actually makes more sense for product shots because you want to have a close-up shots but much more in focus so with a full frame that is going to be an issue you need to stop down the lens quite a lot to get more in focus and that it will also cause issues with diffraction if you at least need to go like to f22 to get like everything in focus with smaller sensors it actually makes it much easier to do that so for video yeah i would say um i still like prefer the look of the a7 III over the GH5 especially like wide angle shots uh, like half body shots I still get like that more blurred background um, but if I have to say for uh, YouTube if I need to do like a lot of product reviews like uh, if I shoot products with the a7 sometimes it's just too much out of focus and then I need to stop it down with the GH5 would be just have like that nice enough focus for me so hello Arama so I kind of like each has their thing because I do like the 4k 60p on the GH5 but it's just sometimes I don't get the look that I want and uh, currently also uh, I don't feel like I have the lenses uh, I do have quite a lot of lenses for the H5 but I don't feel like I have that one lens that would get me there to the look that I really want so the Lumix S1R is going to be quite interesting but still we need to wait for a lot of like Panasonic uh, professional like if you 
really look at it. Uh, Panasonic doesn't really have a lot of really like special flashes for it because the last time I've seen was like Nissan had like a small flash so I don't know if uh, Yongyo or, or Godox have now made lan uh, flashes for those cameras so for photography I'm not quite sure how well actually it, it is because I've tried just using the GH5 for photography events photography but it just didn't I didn't get the look that I want um, it was kind of odd and also the Nissan flash isn't that uh, great compared to like and also because it's a, like a small flash it was actually getting like, a lot of red eyes instead of like having it more uh, off-centered so let's see for third rumors Fuji rumors look at Canon rumors something else what kind of lenses probably 600 so interestingly the m50 even though a lot of uh, youtubers like say it's not that great of a camera it's somehow still like top selling in japan which is quite an interesting thing so let's see actually quite a lot of I'm not quite sure why these numbers about these numbers because personally I noticed or it might be just Japan um, because Japan has like off or like a lot of the people in Japan might see more of like the Canon brand being the best still because what I've noticed on my like friends and everybody else is like there's a lot of people buying the A7R 3 instead uh, but this might be more like people uh, want taking a camera with them on vacation more than um, professional use but yeah for on vacation still the flip out screen gonna beat out uh, a non flip out screen camera so the M50, of course, this flip out screen, the 4K was horrendous on this camera, but still, if you don't use the 4K, then it's still okay. And for photography, it's also quite nice. And let's see what else is happening. This is advertisement. So actually more and more lens companies are coming out right now. So now Kipon is um, also having their lenses. Uh, Viltrox is coming out with lenses. Um, there's like a Boyer company. There's actually quite a lot of new lens companies coming out right now. It's actually quite interesting to see a lot of like the manual lenses that are coming out. But um, I'm not quite sure how they are going to compete because it might be just too many lenses, too many manual lenses coming out from different brands. Because either they need to compete with the prices because if they are not affordable, it kind of becomes like difficult for them to, or for people to really purchase them because they're Basically, if you could get like a autofocus equivalent of the same lens for the same price, you probably would go for the autofocus version instead like for a sharper or like just a manual lens. Let's see. SDK and API programming interface selected. So photo food oh. ah, so that you can program the cameras but that's not really much special let's see for first rumors pretty much the same ok 
close to 3000 the em one x but i i, I highly doubt uh, unless like the people who are already using olympus probably might buy it but i feel like it's a select group aren't becoming smaller also and development new lenses So actually any questions talk about other uh, things because the a7000 what do you guys feel about that talk or the a6700 so basically probably and there's also like talk about like replacing the like let's go to sony rumors sony alpha rumors so because the A6300 and A6500 is also out for a while now. So if the A6300 so HK sensors, I doubt these be for okay, full frame CMOS. I doubt uh, we'll see an 8K or actually being an 8K, but I doubt uh, A7S3 would be an 8K that quick already. So any questions here or anything would you guys want to talk about? Okay, this, this thing, this perfect camera concept is basically an A6300, but with extra buttons here on the side. I feel like this is a little bit silly because I hate these buttons on this left side. Like I never, I don't understand people or would want these buttons here because your eyes are here anyways and your face is probably covering here you want all the buttons on this side where it is open and you can actually touch it with your thumb so fill trucks came out with the 85 1.8 fe lens so it's quite interesting Okay, so it's a full manual lens, so no autofocus. So actually, I want hopefully seeing actually quite a lot of lenses from a lot of companies more. Two hundred sixty-five. I feel like there isn't probably isn't enough gimmick for this to be interesting enough because if 1.8 uh if you spend a little bit more you could just buy the sony version of the 85 1.8 which has autofocus and is pretty fast with autofocus so here so you can see this one basically uh they pretty much uh not new price if you buy it second hand you can find it second hand a lot of people actually not quite sure why but they would like upgrade to the uh, 1.2 or 1.4 version from the size so this lens also quite interesting a lot of people like this gets sold really really quick um, I'm not really sold on it because I'm not really that keen on Tamron lenses but there is a lot of people uh, referring this lens uh, especially the price isn't that bad for such a lens and also it is a nice range but I feel like uh, if you are using the a7 III it should be nice and sharp but if you are using the R2 or the R3 it isn't all that So yeah, we're kind of lingering on. So uh, pretty much the at CS won't see much than like possible entry level Sony camera. 
the 8K stuff of Sony, it's probably be more camcorders. Uh, I doubt there'd be a cam video camera, but it's a doubt. So they might A7S three with 8K, but I highly doubt it because uh, their 4K has now improved, but they still haven't like done 4K 60P on a camera yet. So I still feel like they would do that first before they would handle a 4 or uh, 8K camera. Unless it's 8K camera with 4K 60P. And let's see. And Panasonic comes out with what they already announced. And all everything else doesn't. Action cam rumors doesn't work anymore. So pretty much that was it. Uh, yeah, hopefully you, this was an interesting live. I want to try and do more live and uh, from time to time and maybe about a different topic or just a talk about what uh, kind of videos I've done in the week. So upcoming, uh, actually next upcoming videos, I will be doing a special effects uh, Premiere Pro special effect of uh, Spider-Verse. So I'm trying to do like a, something that's uh, connected to that. And also try a new style of doing more longer videos instead of very short videos. So it'd be like uh, unboxing plus also showing you how to film that, how I film the shots that I'm going to edit in uh, Premiere Pro and then also the effect itself. So be more of like a more full blown uh, episode with more things than just like a quick tutorial. So hopefully that be interesting. But also uh, because the I feel like uh, YouTube algorithm is kind of punishing me for like that I have like a lot of short videos, and I feel like uh, like people are getting less and less views on my. Uh, videos even though I have like pretty good like topics uh, teaching people so yeah that was main it so see you guys next time bye bye